What if I told you that one of the most famous paintings of the Italian Baroque era was lost for almost 200 years and was rediscovered by accident in a Jesuit residence in Dublin? Yes, that's right. This is also the painting that depicts the moment when one of the most infamous betrayals in history took place. But did you know that the artist himself was a fugitive and a murderer? Caravaggio's The Taking of Christ, also known as The Kiss of Judas, depicts the dramatic moment when Jesus is betrayed by one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, and arrested by the soldiers in the Garden of Gethsemane. But this painting is not only remarkable for its history, but also for its artistry and emotion. Caravaggio used his own life and experiences, which were full of violence and crime, to create a realistic and powerful scene. But how did he do it? What makes this painting so special? And what secrets does it hide? Let's find out. The Taking of Christ was painted by Caravaggio in 1602, when he was at the peak of his fame and success in Rome. He was commissioned by a wealthy Roman nobleman, Ciriaco Mattei, who wanted a painting for his private chapel. Caravaggio was known for his innovative and controversial style, which was quite different from the idolized and graceful conventions of the Renaissance and mannerism. He used ordinary people as models, often from the lower classes or even criminals, and painted them with all their flaws and did not try to hide their imperfections. He also employed a dramatic technique known as tenebrism. This technique involves creating a stark contrast between light and dark, which gives his paintings a sense of drama and tension. Caravaggio's style was influenced by his own turbulent and violent life. He was a rebellious and hot-tempered man who often got into fights and scandals. He had a criminal record for assault, defamation, and even murder. He had to flee from Rome in 1606 after killing a man in a brawl over a game of tennis. He spent the last four years of his life on the run, moving from Naples to Malta to Sicily, always looking for new patrons and commissions, but also always ended up in trouble with the law. He died in 1610 under mysterious circumstances. Some believe that his death was caused by an infection while others hold the view that he might have been assassinated by one of his enemies. The Taking of Christ is one of the most renowned and influential works of art by Caravaggio, the Italian Baroque painter. He was influenced by both his artistic predecessors and contemporaries, but he also demonstrated his own originality and genius. The painting's composition is based on a woodcut by Albert Dura from 1509, which depicts the same scene from the Gospel of Mark, where Jesus is betrayed by Judas and arrested by the soldiers. Caravaggio adapted the arrangement of the figures from Dura Dora's woodcut, but he modified some details to make the scene more realistic and dramatic. For instance, he added a lantern in the hand of the man on the right, who is thought to be a self-portrait of Caravaggio himself. He also removed any background or landscape details, concentrating only on the figures and their facial expressions. The painting has seven figures, John, Jesus, Judas, three soldiers, one of whom is barely seen in the back on the right, and lastly we can see a man with a lantern. They stand in a way that we can see only the top part of their bodies. In the scene that is shown, Judas has just kissed Jesus to show the soldiers who he is. They stand in front of a very dark background that hides the setting. The main light comes from the upper left, but we can't see its source in the artwork. There is another source of light though. It comes from the lantern that the man on the right holds. This man may be Caravaggio himself, but he might also be representing Saint Peter, who denied Jesus three times and then brought his light to the world. On the far left, we can see a man running away who said to be Saint John. He raises his arms, his mouth is open, and a soldier pulls his cloak. The scared John running away is different from the artist coming in. Some scholars say that Caravaggio is saying that even a sinner who lived a thousand years after Jesus came back to life knows Christ is better than his friend. The main focus of the painting is on the faces and gestures of Jesus and Judas. They are placed in the center of the composition, against a red curtain that symbolizes blood and perhaps even passion. This part of the painting resembles a 1509 woodcut of Albert Dora from his small passion series. Their faces are almost touching, creating a contrast between their expressions and emotions. Jesus looks calm and resigned, accepting his fate with humility and faith. His hands are clasped together in prayer, while his eyes are closed or looking down. Judas looks tense and nervous. 
betraying his master with a kiss that is both an act of affection and deception at the same time. His eyes are wide open or looking away, avoiding Jesus' gaze. His hands grasp Jesus' shoulder, firmly, a final act of his betrayal. The other characters in the painting also have different reactions to the scene. The soldier on the left looks surprised and curious as if he is witnessing something unexpected or unusual. His mouth is slightly open, while his hand reaches for his sword. The soldier in the center looks determined and aggressive as if he is ready to execute his orders without hesitation or remorse. His mouth is closed, while his hand grabs Jesus' arm forcefully. His shiny armor reflects the light from the lantern, creating a contrast with Jesus' simple robe. The soldier on the right looks indifferent and bored, as if he is doing his job without any interest or emotion. His mouth is neutral, while his hands rest on his hip. His face is partially hidden by the shadow of his helmet, making him less identifiable in the scene. The man holding the lantern in the painting is none other than Caravaggio himself. He appears to be looking over the heads of the soldiers with a curious and attentive gaze. He is the only character who is not directly participating in the action, but rather watching it from a certain distance. He could be interpreted as the symbol of both the artist and the viewer, who are witnessing the dramatic scene and trying to comprehend its meaning at the same time. He also represents Saint Peter, who was one of the disciples of Jesus and who was present at his arrest, but who denied knowing him three times out of fear of being persecuted. Caravaggio may be implying that he, like Peter, is a sinner who is in need of forgiveness and redemption. One of the reasons this painting is so famous is that it was found after having seemingly disappeared for more than 200 years. Yes, that's right. It was 1990 that the lost painting was recognized again. In 1990, it was found in the residence of the Society of Jesus in Dublin, Ireland. And the news of this rediscovery was published in November 1993. In the most recent accounts, this masterpiece of a painting was exhibited in Rome's Scordere del Coronel from February to June 2010 to mark the 400th anniversary of Caravaggio's death. It was also shown in the National Gallery in London in 2016. Many artists have tried to recreate this exceptional work of art, and a dozen of its copies still remain in different parts of the world. For example, one is in a museum in Bolivia, another is in a college in Manchester, a third was once owned by Walter P. Chrysler Jr. Another version of The Taking of Christ is in the Odessa Museum of Western and Eastern Art in Ukraine which some experts think was made by Caravaggio himself. However, that painting was stolen from the museum in 2008 and later found in Germany. After examining and restoring the painting, Ukrainian and Russian scientists came to the conclusion that it was a copy made by Giovanni di Attili for Astrobel Matei, who was the brother of Chiriaco Matei, the original owner of the painting. The painting, Taking of Christ, is a masterpiece of realism and emotion, which captures the essence of Caravaggio's style and vision. It shows his ability to create a vivid and dramatic scene using ordinary people and objects, and a powerful use of light and shadow. It also shows his ability to convey a complex and profound message, using symbols and gestures and a psychological insight into the characters. It makes us ponder upon human psyche and nature, making it a timeless work of art relevant even today. Click on any of the two videos on the screen right now for more content.